Hi, my name's Ben. I'm a senior hardware engineer at Emerson, and today I'll be showing you our Backpack RTK solution. The Backpack RTK can be used for many scanning use cases, indoor-outdoor georeference scanning, small area topographical surveys, and also forestry plantation scanning that is georeferenced. Today I'll be going through what's included in the kit, how to set it up, how to configure the MLED, and how to process with the desired settings in Aura. This is what's included in the Backpack RTK kit. You'll receive a quick start guide, a 100mm GNSS spacer, and a bag with the cables that you need in it. This includes a hover map cable and a GNSS cable. The backpack also includes room for your hover map, two batteries, 360 camera, MLED RTK unit, and a battery charger. This is how you set up your hover map with the backpack RTK. Open the case and remove your receiver, spacer pole, cables, and hover map. And your 360 camera if you're using it. Mount the battery in the battery slot there. Make sure to do up the clips. First, we'll mount the GNSS receiver. Screw on the spacer pole. And your RTK unit. The RTK cable attaches in the extension port on the receiver. The end with the toggle goes into the receiver and the other end goes under this flap into the backpack. You can now turn on the MLED and it will start, uh, start booting. For the hover mat, make sure you plug the cable in first as it's a little tricky to get to afterwards. And it just slots on like normal. There you go. Now I'll show you how to configure the MLED settings in the MLED Flow app. Open your MLED app. Go select your receiver and go to uh, settings. Position streaming one. And make sure that this is set to RS232. Board rate 115200. Format enemy A. And now go into the enemy A settings. Uh, make sure that GGA, GSA, GST uh, and ZDA are set to 5 hertz, and GSV is set to 1 hertz. Also if you're using an RS3, make sure that your IMU tilt sensor is set to off. Uh, in order to configure your corrections, you will want to go into correction input. And at the moment, I've just got this set to a local government uh, network. As you can see, we have an RTK fix with uh, about one centimeter easting and northing precision. We can then swap into uh, switch onto a hover map and go into commander. This is where we'll set up our settings to start a scan in Commander. You'll notice that it's connected to my hover map, ST5009. And I'll start a scan by going new mission. Non-autonomous mapping mission. Check all of these. And continue. Here is where you'll see, if configured properly, the RTK will come through, the status will come through in Commander. You can see that precision there, um, and that we're using 20 satellites. You can continue on to the next page, label your scan, and start. Once starting a scan, 
you can then continue and you can view your RTK status in Commander. So I'll go continue and we can view our scan here. I've got RTK float so I'm going to walk a little bit and when I'm out in the open that should pick back up. Here you can check your RTK status. Now that we've finished capturing our data, we can offload and process in Aura. To offload data, use your USB and plug it into the back of the hover map. You'll see the lights are swiped side to side and you can also monitor the, the progress in the web UI. Now that that's done, we should transfer our scans to the computer. Aura is more reliable when you're processing scans from your computer and not directly off a USB drive or external SSD. In Aura, you can go process scans, add data set, Select the folder. Aura will check what sort of data is in that, in that scan. And it will come up and say, Backpack RTK is detected. We want to use that RTK data. It also says to check your CRS, coordinate reference system, and receiver type. So we'll go to process settings. Uh, double check that uh, the scan was is picked up as Backpack. Uh, check your receiver type. In this case, it was using an MLID, uh, but we also did scans using a, a Trimble R12. And update your CRS. In Australia, our corrections from our ITK uh, base station are in GDA 2020. So we can either search for that, or it will come up in recently used here as well. During processing th this data, I would like to reproject it as well. Uh, so I turn on reprojection and use the local CRS that we, uh, that we want for this project. In this case, it's NGA zone 56. We will also like to apply a geoid, which is the AHD, Australian Height Datum, in this case. Depending on your location, you might have different uh, CRS and geoids. I'll click save. And we can process this data. Here's one that I did earlier. I can view files here. I can open the subsample data or the full size, depending on if you want to uh, do more with it or just check. And you can check your what we have accuracy report uh, either on the right hand toolbar here or in the output files down below. So fit metrics view. This will tell us how well our ITK was reporting. So in this case we have 99% of a fix because we're all mostly outside. Uh, the accuracy reported by the ITK receiver was uh, about 14 millimeters, 90% of it was at least 14 millimeters in the horizontal and 17 millimeters in vertical. That's just what the receiver reported. Uh, and the last, uh, the last table will show you how well the trajectory of the RTK unit aligned with the trajectory of SLAM. That's after we've uh, processed and fit SLAM to the RTK, but this will show any outliers in either poorly reported uh, GPS um, or uh, yeah, areas where you go under inside or un under tunnels where you have um, lower quality GPS. This might show up as, as some larger numbers. In this case, we're still 25 millimeters horizontal in 90% of the cases and 28 millimeters vertical. Uh, so that's a, that's a pretty good alignment for um, a typical outdoor scan using an AMOLED receiver. 
yeah, now you can go and use your use your point cloud data uh, however you would like. This has been reprojected um, to the coordinate system that we want, and you can see all those that that information up here. 